today we reached the last chapter in Zechariah. Today we're in chapter 14, verses 1 and 2. Behold, the day of the Lord is coming, and your spoil will be divided in your midst. For I will gather all the nations to battle against Jerusalem. The city shall be taken, the house is rifled, and the women ravished. Half of the city shall go into captivity, but the remnant of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Zechariah paints a picture of trial for God's people. This is God's final intervention. This is the end of sin and suffering, but boy, it's also an intense ending. This is a time of the great singularity, you know, where God kind of comes and so so little has he apparently to our eyes intervened, although I believe he's intervened a great deal. But here's where things are way out in the open. Things are, God's going to do massive interventions. Like, you know, the worldwide flood, nobody kind of, nobody missed that. This is the kind of interventions, biblical proportion interventions. Uh, but we're, we're scheduled to see some of this kind of stuff coming up. We're looking at a day of intervention, a day of judgment, a day of overturning. These are our extraordinary privileges to live in such times. So we also see that God says he, he will gather the nations against Jerusalem. Well, well, he? Well, yeah, there's a sense in which God is the one who gathers them. I mean, think about this. See, if God insists on his reality is the only reality, and it is the only reality, if he insists on that, if he upholds what's really right and is being right and what's really wrong is being really wrong, then what? I mean, everybody who sets himself against him, everybody who, who determines we're going to rewrite reality on our own terms, all those people are, are putting themselves into a conflict situation with God. And so it's reality versus lies. How's, how's that going to end? But, but that's the setup. That's where we come to at the end where God imposes and he says, look, okay, we've, we've been at this for thousands of years. Every intelligent being in the universe has kind of tuned up and watched this uh, and, and seen the outcome of evil. They've seen the outcome of good. And so, hey, hey, everyone, is there anybody left that needs any more lessons? And, and at that time, everybody will say, we've, we've, we've kind of nailed it down here. We see how selfishness ends, and we see how unselfishness ends. We're good, and God will complete this conflict between good and evil. The things that he has allowed, he has sustained, he's given breath to the, the bad guys and the, the oppressors all through, all through history. He gave the rain to them, and he gave them zucchinis, and you know he gave them all the food they could eat. God will come to a time when he says, all right, there's no, at this point, if I continue this, I'm going to be sustaining evil. So I'm, we're stopping, and he brings a conclusion. By sustaining the actual good, God makes himself the target of evil. By refusing to accept death, he who is life makes himself the target of death. And so in, unless God were to just surrender and just say, do whatever you want and just keep on living and oppressing and, and uh, I'm, I'm going to go over here and do something else. Unless God took that, took that approach, we, this would go on indefinitely until everybody, the sin just burned itself out and everybody was, was, had destroyed each other. But God is working to redeem. God is working to restore and transform. And so time, there comes a time of completion. And we are very near, every, the, every evidence from Bible prophecies shows us that we are very near to that time. So many are made captive, but a remnant are not cut off. A remnant survives, a remnant prevails, God delivers a remnant. And we should examine ourselves, are we really on God's side? Remember, the devil knows all the levers, he knows all the switches and buttons he's, he's been able to press. And as we come close to God, though, he will nullify those buttons. But we have to stand close to him. He will transform us so that the buttons don't work anymore. The devil will say, hey, this isn't working this time. What's, what's going on? Our Lord Jesus has power to heal, to save, to deliver. And so we want to trust in him and let him be doing that carpenter work in us. He promises that through his strength we can do all things. Our weakness with his strength. That's the winning combination. Let's stand close to Jesus. Mm -hmm.